Joe Biden's interview with Charlemagne the God on The Breakfast Club was an unmitigated disaster, to say the least. Um, you know, his statements went viral immediately. Donald Trump's team capitalized on that gaffe, if we want to call it a gaffe, by selling hashtag you ain't black t-shirts and also releasing an ad about Joe Biden's record when it comes to mass incarceration. It was just awful. It was a train wreck. But I want to go back to Charlemagne the God's broader point about Joe Biden needing to appeal to a very loyal demographic that is always there for the Democratic Party. African-American voters, especially black women, they are always there. They are the most loyal group that always delivers victories to Democrats. So the point that Charlemagne was making overall was restated in an interview with Joy Reid on MSNBC, and they had a really honest and open conversation, which is something you don't usually see in mainstream media. But nonetheless, they talked about the need of Joe Biden to appeal to black voters. And afterwards, uh, Joy Reid actually took a lot of heat for this interview. Take a look. What 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 are people telling you that they want him to do? Uh, just some really major policy commitments for the black community, uh, mainly in the form of economic justice. So we can you know, tip the scales on some of this wealth inequality in America. Um, I do hear a lot of people say, you know, we also want him to have a black woman running mate, you know, but not just any black woman running mate, one that's going to actually, you know, get in office and care that black people benefit from her presence there. You know, we need substance and significance over symbolism. And he's already committed to putting a black woman on the Supreme Court. So I just want him and the Democratic Party to know that it's time to give back to the black community in a very tangible way. But I, I can say that, you know, the major the major point that I'm hearing about is just, you know, economic justice, some form of economic justice. And um, let me play the apology that um, Joe Biden gave. He, he got on a call with black business leaders and apologized for the comment that he made at the end of your show. Uh, let me let you listen to that. The last thing I want to do, and I shouldn't have been such a wise guy. I shouldn't have been so cavalier in responding to what I thought was. A, anyway, it, it was I don't take it for granted at all. And no one, no one should have to vote for any party based on their race, their religion, their background. Do you do you think there's a risk that not just Joe Biden, but the Democratic Party in general just takes for granted that, well, the black, the, you know, the black people are with us, so we don't really have to give them anything else. They're going to vote for us regardless. Look, they voted for Joe Biden in overwhelming numbers, six in 10 black voters, particularly in southern states. They all voted for Joe Biden. We don't need to offer anything more. Do you worry that that is the attitude that Democrats are taking toward the black community? <laughs> I mean, I, I know that's the attitude, you know? I mean, that's why I don't even care about the, the words and the lip service and the apology is cool, but the best apology is actually a black agenda. You know, they got to make some real policy commitments to black people. We got to stop back and like, the fact that blacks are overrepresented in America when it comes to welfare, poverty, unemployment, homelessness, drug addiction, crime, coronavirus, like that's no accident. Like the whole function of systemic racism is to marginalize black people. And as the great Dr. Claude Anderson says in the book Powernomics, white society has an out of sight, out of mind attitude about racism. And they don't like to have any discussions of substance about systemic racism. So when you have black people who have the nerve, the audacity, the unmitigated gall to act like citizens and demand something of our vote, it's a problem. It's, just, it's like you got, you know, whites telling telling us to stay in our place and you got black people saying, oh, stop. Now is not the time. You're going to get Trump reelected. It has to come to a point where we stop putting the burden on black voters to show up for Democrats and start putting the burden on Democrats to show up for black voters. Now, I think that was actually a really honest conversation that I want to see more of. Right. There's this sense that if you say anything negatively about a Democrat or the Democratic Party's nominee ever, then you're just automatically, you know, helping Donald Trump. But that's not true. We're all adults. We can be honest and open about what we're getting. Joe Biden is not a good candidate. He's just not. So I think these types of conversations are important to educate voters and also show viewers of MSNBC that they are capable of criticizing Democrats because this is just the propaganda arm of the Democratic Party usually. So it is nice and refreshing, honestly, to see them have these types of frank conversations. Now, I will just say, though, because this kind of is bothering me, Charlemagne the God is saying all of this about Joe Biden, but didn't he support Pete Buttigieg during the primary? Like, I don't know if he openly endorsed Pete Buttigieg, but he was featured in a Pete Buttigieg ad and stumped for him, at least digitally. So, I mean, it, it, it doesn't make sense why you're being so hard on Joe Biden when you supported a candidate 
who was almost as weak as Joe Biden in the primary. And he also uh, supported Kamala Harris. And if he didn't endorse her, he made the case for her on CNN or MSNBC. So, I mean, he's not very consistent, but at times he does make good points. And I do think that this is one of those times. And he says, uh, pretty simply, what he wants is strong policy concessions, tangibles to black America. And I think this is just common sense. I mean, the Democratic Party has got to acknowledge that you can only expect the support of a community for so long until once they realize that you're not serious about delivering them the goods, whatever that may be, they're going to abandon you. You're just not going to automatically have their support. And that's a problem that Democrats are having with a lot of different demographics. I mean, Democrats are on the cusp of losing two generations, millennials and Gen Z. They, uh, Joe Biden in particular, is having difficulties appealing to Latino voters. So the problem is that Democrats do take these communities for granted. They think that they have these demographics unlocked because these demographics, statistically speaking, aren't likely to want to support someone like Donald Trump. But just not liking Donald Trump is an evidence that they're going to vote for you. The problem is that voter apathy is a real issue for Democrats. And the issue is that they stay home. And when that happens, Democrats lose. So I don't think it's too much to ask for Joe Biden to make major economic concessions. In fact, everyone should be asking for major policy concessions for Joe Biden because the country is hurting right now. Everyone's hurting right now. So why is it so unreasonable for Charlemagne the God to say, maybe since black people are so loyal to the Democratic Party, you deliver us something. Deliver us economic justice. Give us something. Reward us for constantly being there for you when, you know, voter turnout is one of the biggest issues. When our community has to put up with, you know, these obstacles to voting, you know, since the Voting Rights Act was gutted, voter ID laws and whatnot. Like, that, that is common sense. That's what you do to win elections. You make sure that you enact policies that benefit the people that are loyal to you. Otherwise, they're not going to be loyal to you. You shouldn't assume that they're always going to be there for you. Now, Joy Reid made a similar point. She said, do you think there's a risk that not just Joe Biden, but the Democratic Party in general just takes for granted black people are with us, so we don't really have to give them anything else because they're going to vote for us regardless? Yeah, I think there is a risk of that, and I think that they're already taking black voters for granted. I do. And for this comment, Joy Reid got a lot of hatred online. Like, not everyone disagreed with her, but her usual following was very against this, to put it lightly. And we'll get to some of the feedback here. But Charlemagne adds, there has to be a time when we stop putting the burden on black voters to show up for Democrats and start putting the burden on Democrats to show up for black voters. And he's correct here. And this is true not just of black voters, but all the voters. It's time for Democrats to actually deliver policy concessions to their base. But they don't do that. They take not just black voters for granted, but all voters for granted. And that's, that's bad. That's bad politics. If you see one thing that is consistent with Donald Trump is that he is constantly throwing red meat to his base. It doesn't matter how you know bad the optics may be. He's constantly trying to make it seem as if he is representing their interests. He hasn't stopped talking about you know the wall and being xenophobic. That's what they want. But Democrats, they try you know to have it both ways and appeal to more conservative leaning Republican Party voters while thinking that, you know, the left is going to be there for them and black voters and Latino voters are going to be there for them when that's not the way that this works. The further to the right that the Democratic Party moves, the more of the left they leave out. And those people aren't just going to, you know, be drug along by the Democratic Party because there's no other option. They're just not going to vote. They check out of electoral politics. That's what happens. That's what we've seen happen before. It happened in 2016. So I think this conversation is incredibly important. Uh, but a lot of people, namely MSNBC's audience, you know, they haven't been conditioned to accept any criticism of Democrats. They hate it, right? Because MSNBC is largely the propaganda wing of the Democratic Party. So when you look at this video's uh, dislikes on YouTube, for an MSNBC video, that's relatively high. That's a lot of dislikes. And one of the top commenters said this, at this point, I feel like even the Democrats want to give Trump four more years. So that's why these types of open and honest conversations don't usually take place, because they have created monsters that won't allow them to attack Democrats. So whenever they actually do attack Democrats, 
they see backlash. It's why, you know, Fire Chris Hayes started trending once he covered Tara Reid's allegations against Joe Biden. Like, you, you reap what you sow. If you have an audience that you have taught to never criticize Democrats, any and all criticism is illegitimate, you know, by definition, because Republicans are bad, this is what's going to happen. You restrict yourself. You kind of back yourself into an ideological and intellectual corner to where you can't criticize Democrats. You can't run segments like this where you are actually doing a good job. Now, on Twitter, that's where Joy Reid got most of the backlash, and she posted a clip of this segment, and some of her fans were not too happy about it. One person tweeted, when Trump gets reelected and continues to appoint conservative judges who will give harsh sentences to black men, I want you to look back at this much to do about nothing exposure you're participating in. You're not covering the context of Joe Biden in artful remarks. Another person says, I think we have reached that stage. Democrats try to level the field for all Americans, but it's an uphill battle against the Republican propaganda machine. Democrats cannot favor, quote, only blacks. The right thing is to work for all Americans. The damn platform is America's best hope. So obviously the entire point that Joy Reid and Charlemagne was trying to make went over this person's head, but nonetheless there's more. Just scrolling now and Joshua Johnson on MSNBC, same thing, beating Joe up over and over. Nothing about the depravity of Donald J. Trump. Seriously? question does msm really want trump another four years is this a ratings thing another person says so another four years of trump is an acceptable outcome if biden fails to court black voters in a manner that meets their approval so i mean these comments are completely delusional completely delusional you really don't think that msnbc covers donald trump enough and beats up on donald trump enough they don't just cover donald trump now that he's president like during the 2015 and 2016 republican party primary they covered him arguably more so than the Democratic part primary. They gave Donald Trump more coverage than Bernie Sanders. So what are you talking about? But you see, this is the type of audience that MSNBC has created. They made it unacceptable. They set the standard that any and all criticism of Democrats is bad. The only person who you can criticize is Bernie Sanders, but any other Democrat is bad. And, you know, if you criticize them at all, it's blasphemy. Talk about Republicans and how bad they are constantly. Never points out maybe Republicans are winning because Democrats are so horrible. This is what MSNBC has done. They have lowered discourse as a network by, you know, engaging in sensationalist clickbait journalism where they just, you know, uh, talk about Donald Trump nonstop, which is important. He's the president, right? But they never point out the flaws with the Democratic Party. The flaws that if Democrats corrected maybe would stop people like Donald Trump from taking office. And here's the thing. At some point, Donald Trump will not be president. That day will come. He's not going to be president forever, right? He's only a human being, uh, even if there's some sort of authoritarian power grab and he just chooses to stay in power forever. He's only a human being. He's not going to live forever. So there will be a day where we are in the post-Trump era in American politics. Maybe, you know, Republican Party politicians emulate his strategy. Who knows? But Trump will not be in power forever. And there's always going to be a Republican who is bad, right? It was the same with George W. Bush, who Democrats seem to love all of a sudden. But there's always going to be a Republican boogeyman. But if you ever want to beat said Republican boogeyman or boogeywoman, if Ivanka wants to run or whatever, you have to fix the issues with your own house. You have to make sure that Democrats are doing enough to appeal to their base. And quite frankly, they're not. So maybe if more of these types of honest conversations took place on MSNBC, maybe Democrats would listen because they watch MSNBC. MSNBC is an establishment-based media outlet. Maybe if they didn't, you know, cater to the needs of the Democratic Party establishment, maybe they might actually listen. Maybe if more of these conversations took place, you know, things would be different. But MSNBC is the one who did this. They built up this audience of conspiracy mongering, you know, uh, blue MAGA Kool-Aid drinking monsters who won't let them criticize anyone but Republicans and Donald Trump specifically. Now, look, I don't want to give you the impression that all of the comments towards Joy Reid were negative because she actually did get a lot of praise for being honest and open about Joe Biden. But I mean, just the mere fact that MSNBC pundits continuously get backlash for talking about Democrats in an objective way, it shows you that, you know, the Democratic Party and their loyalists they are becoming just as culty as the MAGA cult. 
I mean, how many more articles will be released from pundits who say, you know, I, I don't care, you know, Joe Biden, you know, he could boil and eat babies and I'd still vote for him. I mean, this is becoming a cult. And these are the same people who accused Bernie Sanders supporters of being a cult. When we can criticize Bernie Sanders, we're capable of introspection. But here's the thing. If you truly do want to beat Republicans, then you can't just mute your criticisms of the Democratic Party because they're not perfect. That may be something that is difficult for you to hear if you're a Democratic Party loyalist, but they're not perfect. In fact, they're very flawed. And if you actually listen to some of the criticisms, primarily from people on the left, maybe you guys might not have to worry so much about Republicans. Maybe if Democrats course corrected, it would be Republicans following Democrats to the left and away from extremism on the right.